Okay. All right. Cool, guys. So uh, last time we spoke a little bit about the basics of, you know, how to present yourself, you know, how to do GitHub communication, how to do a little bit of quitting and all of that. So today we'll go one step further and uh, we'll talk about, I mean, some of you had asked for LinkedIn specifically, and then there are a bunch of other things like, say, for example, email etiquettes, uh, and then how do we go about, say, for example, you know, writing article and how do we become proactive in communication, right? So we'll talk about all these topics. I'm going to uh, share my screen and then we'll go, go point by point, okay? Uh, please feel free to stop me whenever you guys have any queries or questions, okay? Sure. All right. Okay, so number one, let's start off with LinkedIn. So the number one thing that we need to do on LinkedIn is just make sure that your name, display pick, and headline in the current position is updated properly. Like say for example, uh, you know, I should have my DP, I should have my name properly, I should have my headline or you know where I'm working at, uh, all of that updated. So say for example here, if you go and click, you should see name, headline, and then current position and all of that being updated, right? So that's, that's the very basic, that's the most important part that, you know, capital again, capital letters in the name, what is your current position? Like, so for example, right now, uh, you are a fellow at Alt Campus or a student at Alt Campus, so you can just mention a student at Alt Campus, right? Uh, then write a good descriptive bio about yourself. Okay, just a second, edit that. Descriptive by about yourself, I think that's fine. So, so the about yourself section here is this, right, on, on LinkedIn. So make sure that, again, like I last time I told you in the last, uh, in the last communication session that we had, that each one of you should come up with a paragraph about yourself, you know, who you are, uh, you know, and like say if you make an intro with someone, what are you going to tell them about yourself, right? So again, the same, same basics continuing here too, uh, so you need to come up with an art, uh, sort of a paragraph about yourself, like who, what's your identity? Who do you represent, you know? Uh, I mean, you represent yourself, but like, how do you represent yourself? Like, how do you put yourself out there? Uh, what are the things, what are the interests and hobbies that you have, you know, that people, people should know you for kind of, right? So for example, this is what I have written about myself, right? Similarly, everyone should come up with two, three line paragraph uh, about themselves, right? And then you put it out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, if there's anything that you want to showcase, like, uh, you know, like your blog post, your projects, so in your case, it would be, it would be your blog post or projects, right. Uh, that you want to showcase. Okay. Like, so for example, this is an app that I deployed, right. So please make it into featured. Okay. I don't really have to do right now. So I don't have that section. Uh, but yeah, I mean, because you're looking for a job, uh, you should have, you know, your full stack applications or your best blog posts featured here. Right. Okay, and then we have experience here. Okay, so whatever your past experience has been, uh, please add it here. And in the experience section, uh, what we need to make sure is in your education and experience, please write your role, what you worked on and what impact, what impact and output did your project or team created. Example, I worked on improving the UI UX of the ticketing app that led to 20% time saving on behalf of each customer. Uh, success representative, right? So it's it's not just about, um, you know, the, it's not just about writing about your role and what did you do, but actually, just a sec. Yeah, so it's not just about the role that you write about, like what did you work and what, impact did it achieve, right? Like what uh, What was the output of your work, whatever you did, right? And so, so yeah, for example, it led to 20% time saving on behalf of each customer representative, right? It's each, each customer success representative now. All right, so after that, we have... <laughs> We have skills and endorsements. Okay, so please update your profile with all the skills that you have. In the current, you know, like HTML and CSS, JavaScript, etc. Hello, uh, please unmute yourself if you're not speaking. Hello, hello, hello. Please unmute yourself if you're not speaking. 
Please unmute yourself if you're not speaking. Sorry, please mute yourself. Hmm. Okay, all right. So the next one is about your skills and endorsement. So go ahead and update all your skills that you have like HTML and CSS, JavaScript, full stack, web development, React, Redux, whatever, right? Okay, and then post that there is a recommendation section. So go ahead and recommend people that you have worked with and whose work you liked, right? And give, give genuine recommendations, okay? Don't, you don't have to fake it like, okay, this is my friend and so I'll write a good recommendation for them and I'll ask you to do that. Don't do that, I mean, just write genuine recommendation for each other, right? Um, so that's that's the very basics of LinkedIn. Okay, it's not there's not much to it. Uh, you know, uh, just make sure that you know your name, your bio, your current position is is filled up. Your education and experience is properly done. Your projects that you have worked on, you can add them to the featured section. You can again write about the technology that you have used and why did you build it. It's just about see all of this like all these profiles are basically presentation, okay? Like how do you present yourself? How do you put yourself out there? And so it just has to follow basic guidelines, okay? It has to just make sense. It shouldn't be, you know, someone comes at your profile and your name is, you know, so it's like say for example, mixed of lowercase and uppercase. It just doesn't make sense, right? So just make sure that you have simple stuff, you know, you get it right. Okay, and then add your skills and recommendations and all of that, okay? Now, the next thing is about writing uh writing emails okay now this is something that we struggle with a lot okay uh say for example if you now i'll, I'll show you some examples of the emails that i get at alt campus okay and uh, let's just go through them and see what common mistakes people are making so a lot of times you will get emails wherein see look at this no subject right okay so this person has sent a mail without a subject. Now, now if you're communicating with someone, the other person would want to know what this email is about. Okay, whether it's urgent, super urgent for me to answer right now, or I can delay it, I can answer it after a couple of hours. But if you don't have that information in the subject, it's hard for the receiver to know that. Okay, that is why please include your, uh, you know, subject anytime you write. So I think that also would be my number one point here too. Okay, write a clear and concise subject line for each new email thread that you start. Okay, so say for example, I need help with something, uh, like say I need help with, um, you know, deploying an app. So I should, so my, so if I go ahead and I want, like probably here, I want to send a new mail to a friend of mine. Okay, and then in the, in the subject, I should be saying that, yeah, need help with deploying Node.js app, right? That is what it's, it's clear. It says what you need, right? And uh, it's very concise. It's not one line or two line or three line. It's just hardly four or five words, right? So this is what we mean when we say clear and concise. The subject line should say what this email is about and it should be concise. It should be small and clear to the point, right? Uh, so that's the number one in, in, in your email. Then when you're talking to someone and there is an email thread that is already going, make sure that you reply on the same email thread rather than starting a new email thread for a particular subject. Like say for example, I send this mail to uh, Ayush here, right? And then Ayush replies back to me, okay? On the same email thread. Then if, if I'm going to continue that conversation on deploying Node.js app, then I should reply under the same thread rather than starting a new email thread. You know what email thread is, right? Yeah, everyone understands what an email thread is? Yes, sir. Yeah, email thread is basically, you know, uh, all the replies to a particular email, that's all. It's like just a stream of, uh, replies to a particular topic okay particular subject so so yeah uh, so all the all the all the replies to on a particular topic should go into uh, your that particular email thread now these are very very simple stuff but like a lot of people just get it wrong i mean i same person sends me three email on the same thing regarding the same thing uh, you know just on three different dates three different email rather than just like replying to the same same email thread and it's kind of annoying um, now start each new mail thread with a proper salutation. You can skip it after first mail. So each time you start a, a, a new conversation or a new subject, you know, with someone, then make sure that you write the right salutation. Like say, for example, hi, uh, hi Prashant with B capital rather than, you know, um, so, and then, then you go about, you know, whatever your masses be, right? And then, then as you go on on the same conversation from the next, you know, second or third reply, you can skip the salutation or this high part, okay? But 
just write the body okay and now also each email that you write should have sort of like a uh, end signature as in like thanks or cheers uh, whatever your name if you want you can put your uh, you know phone number but that that depends on what kind of you know whether it's a personal mail professional mail and all of that but yeah at least put your cheers or thanks prashant right um now double read your email before sending it like a lot of people just don't take out the time to again go through the email or whatever they have written and a lot of times they just end up miscommunicating or leaving out important parts and that's because they have not taken the care of going through the email once they have actually written it so sometimes when you're writing you think that you have written but you actually just sometimes you know you you lose the words right so you don't want to do that you want to go through the email again before you finally send it okay now is carbon copy or or bcc when you need to keep other people in loop like say for example there is something that i need to uh, i need sunny to be informed on but i am talking to ayush or abhishek right so i'll send abhishek the mail but i'll keep uh, sunny the cc right uh, cc to the mail right like there is an option to cc people right okay so when like i can so this mail so to is who you want a reply from okay or or you want to inform cc is the one that you want to keep in loop for example meaning you want that person to know that this communication has happened between me and abhishek like right? say for example here if i write abhishek and you know uh, and then say for example whatever and then in cc i put sunny that means i'm talking to this abhishek but i also want sunny to be in the loop i want sunny to know about this conversation between me and abhishek right so that is what cc is for you now cc when you do cc it's visible to the other people okay for example in this case abhishek would know that sunny is cc to the mail but if you use bcc uh, then what what that means is that abhishek will receive the mail sunny will also receive the mail uh, but uh, abhishek won't know that this mail has also been sent to sunny okay so so yeah keep other people in in loop when when you are using um, i mean if you need to keep other people in loop using email then just do cc or Uh, bcc okay now uh, let's talk about article writing okay now when you are writing articles like say for example these days i mean we ask people to uh, you know write blog posts so i don't know what your methodology of writing blog posts is but here's how i do it okay uh, i start with a point wise outline right like say for example uh let's go through let's go through an article that we have published recently and see how i went through writing that article okay so for example four simple systems to help you learn programming faster right this is the article that i wrote uh, a week ago or something so in this article i was what i did first is that i I, i i didn't come up with the article uh, this thing first as in like the heading first what i did was that i wanted to write an article where in like that helps people you know develop systems that help them learn faster right so what works for us we, i know i know from my experience that hey learning in public helps a lot okay right so i just made a point about that okay that learning in public so i'll i'll go ahead and open an editor like um say for example something over like this is the article that we have written right uh, and then here what else so i'll start with one learn in public okay now i know this i know i know what learning in public means and i need to describe this to the reader the reader doesn't know much about learning in public right i know that but i also know that i don't need to describe it right now okay let i'll i'll just keep the keep the the heading there the title or the the point there right and then i'll i'll go on about the next topic right or the next uh, point in the article then i also know that a lot of time people just don't use pen and paper and from my experience i know that using pen and paper if you do it it helps you break down the problem and solve the problem faster than just try, starting to write code right uh, like for example a lot of people start doing code wars and then the first thing okay they open open the the code wars uh, this thing editor and then they see the problem and then they start you know writing code or writing for loop or if loop or whatever uh, there right but the problem there is that you're not thinking you should be giving yourself time to think and you do thinking when you're actually writing okay so i i want this act of writing and thinking to happen on the paper because there you can you know you can change your mind you can draw stuff you can write you can you know sort of do all sorts of things easily okay rather than over over or a digital medium so i know that using pen and paper helps people learn faster or can break down the problem and 
you know uh, get to the solution faster because they are thinking at that point of time so my the second point becomes solve the problem on the paper first right and then i know that a lot of people fail to make progress because there is no one to give them feedback right like say for example with you guys uh, what happens is that you are learning right now and then if you do html and css then your mentor will uh, you know schedule a checkpoint call with you and get on a call and do assessment and review of your code right uh, that the purpose of that is so that you get feedback that uh, the 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 tag that you use was it semantically correct or not uh, the css the CSS uh, that you're using is that again correct or not, or you're using some hacks. So the mentor will give you feedback, and because mentor gives you feedback, you instantly take those feedbacks and start learning, or like you know start implementing those feedbacks in order to learn better, right? Uh, learn faster. So I know that having a mentor mentor who gives you feedback is critical in this process of speeding up your uh, learning pace, right? So so yeah. Similarly, my third point would be. Find a feedback mechanism, someone to give you feedback or do code review. So I'm just going to put it out there, okay? And then again, um, the other thing that stops people from like learning faster is that they're always just learning theory, okay? They're never actually getting to implement it in, in, in a practical assignment, right? So for example, for example, they're learning, um, you know, like something missing, like, like a box model, right? So they will learn about box model positioning and uh, whatnot, like margin padding and uh, this, uh, whatever. But they are not building it. And that is the problem with a lot of tutorials or a lot of Udemy courses and blah, blah out there, right? Is that they just could make you go through these, uh, you know, theory part, okay? But what you want is that, okay, you have learned box model margin padding, but how do I use that into a small page, right? That I want to build. So what that means is that people are not building something. They're always in, skipping from one to two. Oh, I learned to at Udemy on this using this course, okay? But uh, you know, I don't know if I'm confident about it. So I'm going to watch another video, okay? Rather than actually taking the time out to build something, right? Now, so that is the problem. So I know this, and because people don't do practice, they are not confident, right? And uh, so that means that okay, they should actually be building something rather than being in the tutorial hell, okay? Which is um, just like watching with videos okay so now these are the four points that i i mean if i had thought longer probably i could come up with another okay but this seemed enough for me that okay this can be a i mean long enough article sort of that people want to read in three to five minutes um so yeah so these are the four points that i have for my article okay now my next thing will be i'll flesh it up okay flesh it up with the content that makes it easy for me for the reader to understand the point for example learn in public what does learn in public mean, okay? And uh, why is learning in public important, okay? How does it help my programming? Now, the point that the article that we're writing about is about learning faster, okay? So all the points that we make should, should be like a pyramid structure, okay? For example, we start with learn in public, okay? Then the learn in public should actually take us to the top, okay? Which is learning faster, right? So we, I need to make the case that how is learning in public going to help me learn faster, okay? So basically then I'll spend some time and then I'll come up with a paragraph supporting my argument, explaining what one learning in public is, and then the second point that how it's going to help you learn faster, okay? So say for example, learning in public means sharing whatever you learn publicly. It could be through tweets, blogs, uh, videos, cartoons, etc. The idea is to teach whatever you have learned or share whatever you have created, okay? So in this one paragraph, my one idea is clear, okay? I'm just defining what learning in public is, right? Okay, and using these two lines, I have communicated what learning in public means, okay? Now, how does learning in public help me, you know, get this goal of learning faster? Then I, I, I go about backing my argument of learning faster using learn in public by saying it helps in keeping you accountable consistent and motivated you increase the surface area of getting feedback and networking with others okay here are a few things that you can so this helps us okay why should why is learning in public helping because one of the key problems in learning is being motivated and consistently putting in the effort okay people don't show up every day but if you start learning in public and you start putting your tweets out there you know it builds a sort of like a small feedback loop and sort of like you people like your progress and then you know you are motivated because people are liking your progress like it's a kind of like a dopamine hit, right so and then you want to sort of you also build your network and like you know get more feedback so it helps you again just be more consistent and being more consistent helps you learn faster 
and then i go about talking about okay how can you actually implement it in your uh, you know learning design so for example okay you should be tweeting about your progress every day uh, write blog posts on whatever you have learned okay and to get inspiration look at the students all campus tweeting their progress publicly to learn more about this idea read this fun, fantastic article learning in public so here my my aim is to help the reader as much as possible right so i'm so for me it's not i mean it's important that i explain what learning in public means but what is even more important is that actually student gets the, the idea clearly and actually starts implementing in their learning design okay only then it's an impact, impactful article right um so i mean i've always believed that an article or a content is good if it actually leads you to getting into some action rather than just reading and you know acquiring some knowledge knowledge is useless if you don't apply it right so so we want to write an article which is which people find helpful which people which just doesn't give you knowledge but also actually helps you take actions okay so for example i'm showing them examples okay how all campus students are using twitter or learning in public to keep themselves motivated and accountable and all of that and then there is this brilliant article by another person who has written long in depth about you know learning in public so see so yeah, i just added links to that okay so it's just basically helping the the reader out now so this is the second part of writing okay flesh up your outline with supporting examples and context okay so we set context on okay for example in this example learn in public what does learning learning in public mean uh, how can i do this and how is it going to you know help me learn faster right so the the first thing that you do is you write a point wise outline and then the second thing that you do is you write supporting examples with context right okay now the third point in article writing is you spend more time editing than writing okay now this is this is super important okay a lot of times see they say that write drunk but edit sober okay what that means is that you want your creative ideas to be on the paper or on the screen or in the document the first time you are writing the script or writing the article right so the first time you want to put your ideas or you are writing an article you want to be creative you want to put all your best ideas out there okay but sometimes it just can get you know too messy so what you want is that when you are editing uh you want to take a lot of time to only filter out you know weed out sort of like the bad ideas one only publish the best ideas that you have or the best way uh you know sort of you can present your article right so spend more time editing than actually writing okay and sometimes you will see that okay i i i read this sentence and it doesn't feel right to me okay and so while you are editing it you will take the time to rewrite so that it's easier to understand right now you can also use other tools like say for example hemingway app okay hemingwayapp.com to find out what is the um, what is the writing sort of uh, you know grade grade as in like can the can a ninth person ninth class or ninth grade student learn and under, understand this article can a 12th you know grade a uh, student can understand or can a sixth grade so basically the lower your grade the better your writing is okay so you should write such that even like a second grader or a third grader should be able to understand it so for example if i have written this article i would like to take this and then i'll just go ahead and put it in this app okay and then it will also tell me a few so a grade read so it's a readability of grade 8 means meaning that okay a uh, grade 8 student can you know uh, read and understand this and then there are a bunch of issues maybe one of the nine sentences is hard to read zero of the nine sentences are very hard to read two adverbs meeting the goal of so there's just some good practices on the writing part that it it helps us with uh, so you i can just like see what the problem is i can i can probably fix it okay um and maybe if i mean this is not hard and fast so i have i have i have gone through hemingway for this article and i feel like okay these words can stay as it is it's not necessary that i take them out or i follow this to the hilt to the suggestions that hemingway is giving me but in general it gives a very good sense of what is the readability of the article so if it's grade eight for our target audience that seems fine uh so yeah i mean that that's till then i can edit it and then and be like okay now i can publish it right okay so so yeah you can use the hemingway app to do that um next we okay one paragraph should communicate one idea okay this i have already told uh, while i was talking about the learn in public article that one paragraph is for say for example this paragraph is communicating all about what learning in public is 
okay this paragraph it's two lines okay and it's talking about how does it help us become i mean uh, how, how does it help us learn programming faster right and then there are a few tips so this paragraph talks about how can you actually implement it in your design right so so one one particular paragraph so it's important that you break down your paragraph for two three lines one paragraph should be actually talking about one particular idea only okay and uh, okay so that's about article writing then we have proactiveness in communication now so far what we have talked about is just like basic etiquettes and you know email linkedin email article writing and stuff like that but now this is the crux of this you know session okay this is the most important part and this is most relevant as a software developer okay now proactiveness in communication okay when you don't have enough information don't assume ask ask proactively meaning sometimes we don't know what we are supposed to do okay or sometimes uh, in some instructions has been given to us but they're not clear enough okay uh, or sometimes even if the instructions are given uh, we don't know we don't have enough context okay and that happens a lot okay so in that case please don't assume anything okay you're supposed to ask okay so whoever has assigned you the task or whatever right whoever is the concerned person right go ahead and ask them okay don't don't hesitate ask them about more information okay ask them the questions that will help you actually be productive on that issue right uh, so don't assume anything be proactive be proactive in asking okay now the second point about proactiveness is that when something seems to be wrong don't wait for other people to notice or something to blow up okay proactively bring it out to the notice of the team okay say for example i'm I've, i've been given part a in the application okay and there is part b that i also know about but it's not under my direct responsibility okay except for example front end and back end okay so i am responsible for front end but i also know back end uh, but i am not responsible for back end okay and in this app that we are working on we are working as a team and then i see that there is something wrong in the back end part okay i i just happen to notice i am not going out looking for it okay uh, and ideally i mean you should not be you should just be concerned about your front end but by who can cook or something i mean i'm i just notice something that is wrong and i know for sure that this is going to cause an issue in the during the deployment or after the deployment and stuff like that and it can blow things up like say for example our app can be down for a while if this issue is actually you know not resolved and goes under the uh, deployment right now what do i do i mean there are ways there are multiple ways of going about it one is that it's not my part and i don't care about it right and that's also fine i mean i mean strictly speaking that's fine okay but again uh, you don't want your team's application to break right so even if it's not under your direct responsibility you should be proactive in communicating that to the back end team you don't have to fix it but you have to point it out to the concerned person in the back end team that hey uh, this i think is wrong and it might cause issues in such and such way uh, and so please can you guys look take a look at this and you know yeah at least like at least you have what you have done is that you have pointed it out Uh, and like sort of like flag it right kind of uh, and but when you do it you make sure that the way you present it is super important right you don't want to be coming across in their territory because people i mean we are humans and we don't like that so um when you are putting it out there just use i mean what's like where you like not 100% sure but like you are suggesting that it could right uh So yeah, I mean, you just have to make sure that your right, your you know, wordings is wordings are correct, right? So for example, this could potentially you know lead to such and such problem. I'm not sure, but please uh, take a look. Something like that, okay? Um, so similarly with anything, like so for example, in our campus or or anything, there's something that you're not direct responsible for, but things could go wrong if this is not fixed. Uh, it's your it's your sort of you know um, not really responsibility, but just like being a good team member you should you should point it out right so be proactive in communication the first part is super important because if it, if it if the issue has been directly assigned to you you should be 100% clear on what the expectation is and what and how you're supposed to go about it right okay sometimes what will happen is that you will have to execute under conditions where there's not enough clarity and no one has that clarity and it's because no one has the clarity on the particular problem okay and in that case you have to use your ingenuity to come up with solutions and that's a different slightly different case okay but most of the times in software uh, especially as a junior developer uh, ideally uh, you will you you will get enough instructions and if you don't have then please ask okay all right so 
um that's about for today do you guys have any questions so far anything anyone uh sir i have a question yes uh so while writing an article uh, which is like a more appropriate uh, thing to do like uh, writing an article in small chunks or writing in uh, writing a big article like which one you take or which is the best approach or way to write an article no it depends on the aim okay um what what is our aim with this article okay uh so say for example we just have learned about say uh you know hooks in react okay and i just want to put it out there so it doesn't have to be super long i mean it just has to talk about hooks in react and like however long does it take it takes 500 words great it takes 1000 words to explain it great uh but like say something like okay i'm going to explain entire react okay uh fundamentals as well as you know sort of like a little bit of advanced topics hooks context and this that uh and i then i want to make multi part because i don't want the reader to get bored of like reading a long as article on on react right it could be 10000 words okay so in that case i will break it down right or else you're just writing a book right so it depends it depends on the topic that you are you are writing about okay mm, yeah yeah does that help yeah sure okay all right anyone else uh yes sir so actually i have a small doubt so uh -huh. which is uh, in my mind from mm -hmm. since uh, many days so uh, as a drop out drop out like you know whether i should uh, include my you know uh, the part time my education in the linkedin or any professional uh, platform as part of education or else yes. like i have yes to... yes do put it as part of your education so uh, okay i have done my two years of engineering so i i mean i didn't complete it so i, I can put it you know put it uh, as a what, dropout. on what year like put it out okay. whatever 2016 to 2018 this college dropout yeah yeah okay good yeah anyone anything else hi prashant we do here hello yes hi prashant it was a nice session uh, I wanted to ask about uh, would you be doing another session about LinkedIn growth specifically anytime in the future? 